Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic, disaster recovery. And we'll be covering what is disaster recovery, why it is needed, what are the different ways in which disaster recovery can be done. And all of this we'll just cover within 10 minutes. It's like a quick uh, digest or a summary of what disaster recovery is. So first of all, let's talk about what is disaster recovery, which means if we have an application which has been deployed in production, what will happen if for some reason that application goes down, all of the functionality or some part of the functionality of that application is not available. Then how do we recover from that loss and what is the time that we take to recover? And it is extremely important to plan about it because Depends on how critical our application is, but generally we would never want our application to absolutely go down and not be available because the whole point of building an application is that we want it to be available to serve the purpose for which it was built. Now, depending on the criticality of the application, the downtime can vary. So if the application is super critical, then we may not want the application to be down even for a minute. And that is when we have to plan very carefully how the disaster recovery would happen, how we would have maybe replicas, backups or a similar setup somewhere else uh, in some other geography to be available so that if one of the setup or one of the machine server that goes down, we can switch to the other one. So every application that we design while designing, we also plan for disaster recovery. Now it is an agreement between the technical users and the business users. The business users are the people who tell us how critical the application is and how much of a downtime can they actually live with. And that is when the technical team, according to the business needs, plans their disaster recovery strategy. So all in all, disaster recovery means if your application or, or the some parts of your application's functionality are down, how do you recover back and in how much time do you recover back? There are two high level approaches that I'll talk about. So we'll go into the details of different strategies, but to think about how it is done, there is an active, active approach and an active passive approach, which means if I have a setup today for my application, which is running in production, and I want to active active, which means the moment my application fails, it switches over to the other setup which I have. So the, there are two setups that I do or they, these are replica of each other and in an active active scenario and this is for super critical applications, both the setups are actively available and it is just a matter of switching to the secondary one once the primary fails. Active passive means there are two setups, one primary, one secondary, but both of them are not live at one point of time. Only the primary is functioning. When the primary goes down, there is a bit of time taken to bring up the secondary. So the secondary is in a passive state. Now, how do we decide whether we want an active or a passive one is based on the criticality of the application and how much of a downtime can we live with? because there is a cost associated with maintaining an active active setup for maintaining both primary and secondary always in a synced up state in an active state is a costly affair because specifically for transactional systems there are a lot of operations happening a lot of data getting inserted into our databases in the primary setup to have an active active setup we will need a live syncing between primary setup and the secondary setup which is going to be costly so depending on the criticality of the application at a high level, we decide whether we need an active setup or a passive setup. Now the level of functionality that is required during a disaster. So first of all, it is important to understand, are we okay if something fails, that application is unavailable, is it fine with us? Or we are okay with a partially available reduced functionality. It may happen that some parts of the application may fail and we are okay with that partial availability. Are we okay for the application to be unavailable for a certain period of time? We are, or we want to look at it as a delayed availability. Yes, my primary setup fails, but I'm okay to have a delay and then have my secondary come up. Or I want to have it fully available all the time. 
it can fall only in one of these four buckets and based on that i will design my disaster recovery strategy available partially available with reduced functionality delayed availability and fully available at all times also i would like to talk about few important terms that you will keep hearing when you talk about disaster recovery the first and foremost is rpo which means recovery point objective so two things you'll always hear what is the rpo what is the rto and these are the questions we ask business and then decide on a disaster recovery strategy so rpo means how much of data loss can i live with so if there is a disaster of course there is some data that is constantly coming to our primary setup we are processing that storing it if the primary setup goes down before i bring the secondary setup up there may be some part data loss that is happening so that is my recovery point objective how much data loss is okay okay without impacting the business the second thing is recovery time objective which means what is the acceptable downtime on for an outage okay and now rto uh, we may say that the rto can be 2 hours which means i am okay to live with a downtime of 2 hours and by that time i will ensure that my secondary setup comes up and becomes the primary one so rpo will answer a question that how much data could be lost without significantly impacting the business and rto is going to answer the question how much time after notification of business process disruption should it take to recover there is a business disruption how much time can we actually afford before we bring up uh, the application back so these are the most important terms for disaster recovery now let us look at three approaches that are commonly followed one is active passive with a cold standby second active passive with pilot light and third is active passive with warm standby these are the three primary approaches so the first one active passive with cold standby now what will happen is there is a primary setup like i said where your application is running there are servers there are different configurations you have done in you have made your application live in production that's the primary one it is active there is a secondary standby setup which is an exact replica of the primary but it is passive that means it is not running actively it will only come into life when the primary goes down now whenever there is a failover we will switch over to the secondary setup this is a cost effective way because you are not running two processes or two setups parallelly only one is active at one point of time but you are taking backups you are creating replicas and you are always ready to bring up the secondary with some amount of time delay once the primary fails it is cost effective but it will take more time to undertake a complete failover because it is not at the secondary setup is not active so you will take some amount of time so your rto is going to be bigger but this is fine when the application is not super critical so this is the first strategy to have a passive secondary and bring it up only when there is a failover this is known as a active passive with a cold standby the second approach is having a active primary and a secondary standby but it is not completely cold it is passive which means it is the secondary is also executing but with minimal functionality this is when the primary fails then we will switch over to the secondary and make it completely live before that only a part of functionality is what we are keeping live on the secondary here the time taken to bring up the secondary will be little lesser than the first approach that we spoke about the cold standby because in cold standby it was not operating at all it was just on a standby but here a minimum part is active and this is a strategy which we will follow when our application is not super critical but still it is the rto is lesser we do not want a lot of time uh, to bring up the secondary that is when we have this kind of a active passive with pilot light pilot light means the secondary is still operating but with reduced functionality so this is cost effective because we are not maintaining two active setups and takes comparatively lesser time than the cold standby so this is kind of a 
मिडल अप्रोच और मिडल पाथ दैट वी कैन टेक बिटवीन एक्टिव एक्टिव एंड एक्टिव पैसिव द थर्ड इज वेयर वी हैव अ प्राइमरी विच इज एक्टिव एंड अ सेकेंडरी विच इज पैसिव बट ऑल सर्विसेज आर अप एंड रनिंग दिस इज लेस कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव बिकॉज इट्स एन एग्जैक्ट रेप्लिका ऑफ द प्राइमरी एंड इट इज running but the only difference is when i say passive right all the services are up and running just like the primary but it is passive because when the transactions let's say are coming they are not going to two places to the primary and the secondary the secondary is just up and running with all the configuration setup services are running but it is not operating like the primary only in case of failover it will start getting all the uh, request to the secondary and it will start operating and it will take lot of uh, a lot lesser time than the cold standby or the pilot light standby because the services are already up and running but this will be less cost effective because we are maintaining two setups so the this is another example of how we can do active passive so all the three approaches that we spoke about are active passive approaches one where it is on cold standby where primary is running secondary is not running at all so the rto will be bigger second is where the secondary is running but with very minimal functionality or services so here the rto will be lesser compared to the first but it will be cost effective and the third one is active passive with a warm standby all the services are running and we can quickly shift to it so these are the three types of active passive Active active is simple where we have both the setups up and running. All transactions are going to both the setups or entire ETL that is happening on the active or the primary setup is also happening on the secondary setup. So it's a immediate uh, failover. Whenever there is a failover, it immediately goes to the secondary. So it is extremely expensive but useful for super critical applications. now what are the ways to do this it's when we want to do disaster recovery <clears throat> and want to bring up the secondary the easiest way to is to have replication and backups if we have backups we can restore so a common practice is to have snapshots uh, have replication of the data in multiple geographies and have the backup it can be a scheduled backup with some retention period where you constantly keep snapshots or backups you create restore points for all your uh, data that is there so that you can bring up the secondary now one of the things to keep in mind is <clears throat> in case of replication we would like to have if the application is very critical we would like to have geography uh, based replication geo multi geo replication because if there is a data center failure if there is a entire region which goes under flood or some kind of a disaster natural disaster if you have a backup in a different geography you can quickly bring up your secondary setup so depending on the application's criticality and discussion with business the technical team can decide what kind of strategy do they have to follow because it will come with a cost so this was all about uh, disaster recovery the approaches and how should we think about it i hope this gives you a quick overview of what to think about when you are designing your application in terms of failover and disaster recovery so keep liking sharing and subscribing to the channel to get more interesting videos thank you so much